this figure, we want to look at the potential actions of hydrophilic hormones to stimulate a change in cell function um, utilizing what's called a G protein coupled receptor. So what we have here is our hydrophilic hormone circulating in the bloodstream. Right? It's going to diffuse out randomly. Uh, some of those find the receptor binding site found right here and would uh, we would end up with binding right at that receptor. Well, upon binding, what happens is the they're called recruiter uh, receptors because they recruit other proteins to help them mediate the intracellular response to this particular hormone. And so in this case, the recruiter receptor uh, binds with a, what's called a G protein. And there are actually two versions of this. Um, well, there's more than two, but two main versions, uh, a GS and a GI. And GS proteins tend to be stimulatory to the downstream enzyme. Uh, the, in, in this case, it's going to be adenylate cyclase, AC. Uh, there are also GI proteins, not shown here, that are actually inhibitory to that downstream uh, enzyme and could uh, oppose the production of a second messenger. Um, now, in this case, we're, we're going to be working with the GS protein here. And upon receptor binding, we activate that GS protein, which then uh, stimulates this adenylate cyclase uh, enzyme to become active. And so uh, that enzyme then processes its substrate, ATP, shown by the, the red circles here, to produce cyclic AMP, the second messenger molecule, shown by the, the half circles. Now, cyclic AMP is uh, an intracellular signal that helps mediate the response to this hydrophilic hormone that couldn't actually enter the cell to stimulate uh, a reaction or a response itself. Now, cyclic AMP can actually go on and do several things, um, one of which is to uh, bind to uh, and activate uh, something called PKA, protein kinase A. Well, this is essentially a cyclic AMP P dependent protein kinase. That's a mouthful, but what it is, is a kinase, an enzyme uh, that's dependent upon cyclic AMP binding to become active. And a kinase adds phosphate groups to particular proteins. And when those particular proteins become phosphorylated, they become active, right? And so down here, we've got our active uh, PKA, right, stimulated by binding of our cyclic AMP to it. And then that PKA goes on to phosphorylate a whole variety uh, of potential substrates, enzymes, ion channels, and even transcription factors, uh, one in particular known as CREB. And what that means is we can uh, alter the cell's uh, expression or activity of enzymes, therefore modifying its function. Cyclic AMP uh, can actually act through a couple of other pathways. Uh, it can bind directly and regulate ion channel um, permeability, or it can also bind to and activate another group of proteins called exchange proteins, uh, which are uh, molecular switches themselves. They, they go ahead and, and activate uh, proteins through a separate mechanism. Now, one of the key things that happens with a signal transduction mechanism such as this uh, is called amplification. And what that means is that a single, the binding of a single hormone molecule to a receptor uh, turns on, in this case, again, adenylate cyclase. But we don't make one cyclic AMP molecule. We make potentially hundreds or even thousands of them. Right? So we've actually magnified that response. We've amplified it. Right? In addition, once we activate um, protein kinase A, right, it will lead to the phosphorylation of not one enzyme or one ion channel, but many. Right? So again, we get a, a, an accentuation of the intracellular response due to activation of these enzymes that can process, process multiple substrates uh, over time. Uh, keep in mind, we have to always be able to shut off the activity of a particular hormone. And so we'd have to be able to degrade the, the uh, hormone molecule itself. We'd have to be able to degrade the cyclic AMP molecule. For that, we have a, an enzyme called phosphodiesterase. It turns it into this inactive metabolite called 5' AMP. 
Uh, we'd also be, have to be able to undo some of the things down here at the end, specifically on the left here, uh, undoing the phosphorylation is accomplished by enzymes called phosphatases. Phosphatases remove uh, the phosphate groups. And again, so you, the phosphate group itself being sort of a molecular switch, either making an inactive protein active or vice versa. And of course, the phosphatase undoing that action.